out fishing? I say we, it's just me. But I'm on the bank. I've escaped the painting and decorating. Well, actually, the wife was working last night, so by the time she comes home this morning and finds me gone, she's probably going to be, you know, angry wife again. Anyway, it's always a good day. We're on the bank, so uh, roll the intro and let's see how the day goes. <laughs> Good morning! Here we are, another day on the fantastic River Urn system in Northern Ireland. I'm fishing, you've seen me fish here before, this is the viaduct. I'm just fishing the lazy peg, as you can see I'm just parked right behind me. Apparently this place during the week did average of six kilos a peg for a little uh, private knock-up some of my police friends had. From what I can gather the better weights came from this side. Normally they come from that side which is... But just out for a day see if I can catch anything. I'm feeding a kilo of Census 3000 Magic when I moved house from the old uh, fishing shed to the new place there was a box of 10 bags of magic, there was a box of 10 bags of explosive feeder, there was there must have been two boxes of uh, black roach and bream 3000 all these were kind of put at the back of the, at the, back of the, uh, the shed and well forgot about so I'll be using census ground bait for the foreseeable future. Having said that, I still have saw new baits and I still have other stuff sitting in the shed or the man the, the garage now. So we're well stocked up on ground bait. Feeding with a a bait up feeder. It's the first two as this is the second cast of this. I had two casts with one of these full of particle, full of corn and hemp and castor to get some bait on the bottom. I'm going to fish with these for about an hour and then I'm going to switch to something like uh, something like this, a window feeder. Weather wise it's to be warm and overcast all day. Because the river is moving I've got the rods on the uh, the uprest, or the, the the up in the air rest, even I don't know the proper term for it. So we're just this is a deeper part of the urn. I'm just getting a few rattles again and fish because the river's moving. You're gonna be sick of me saying this. The tips bent like this here. So when the fish knocks at the tip will spring back, drop back bite, and we haven't got any bite. Well, I've got a few little knocks, I think they're line bites, but nothing serious. Nothing, nothing to pick up the rod and try and strike. I'm going to cast every, th every second minute to build a bed of feet up for the first hour, and then probably switch to maybe every five minutes. So, let's see what today does, eh? That was interesting. I just had the absolute shit scared out of me. I was bringing a small perch. Small perch just about broke the surface as I was about to put the net under it. And bosh! A lovely big pike came up and ate the perch. I'd estimate the pike, I would say it was mid-twenties, beautiful big thing. Beautiful pike. But I got my little perch in and it's got a few, uh, a few war wounds, poor little thing. I'm not sure if it's going to 
going to make it. But if it doesn't make it, this is the beauty about being a, a pike angler as well. If the poor thing dies, then it's not going to go to waste. I'll just end up freezing it and using it as dead bit in the uh, winter time. The problem with this part of the river, the pike are very much uh, travellers. They move up and down it. They follow the shoals of fish. They're not territorial on this part of the river, I don't think. Sure, you'll have likely spots. I mean, if I was if I was on a boat throwing lures today, the far bank with all those lilies and grass cover, that just screams topwater bits. But. It's really, really warm actually. It's kind of a muggy, sticky heat. So, I think it may be too warm for pike angling. I'm not going to get into the debate about summer pike angling. I mean, it's, it's, it's simple. You know, I don't fish for pike in the summer because it's too warm. There's not enough oxygen in the water to support them. If you're bait fishing for pike in the summer when it's really warm, then I think that's I think that's uh, negligent. I don't think that's a good idea. The pike will suck in the bait that quick that you'll end up gut hooking them. I am looking forward to this year's pike fishing season. Hard to believe it's August. You know, hard to believe that I've been furloughed on off work since March with this COVID thing there's no update about when I'm going back to work in a way that's that's not a bad thing because it gives me time to fix up my house but every now and then you need a break from decorating I mean there's only so many times you can paint bloody walls and ceilings before you start to go cuckoo in the brain Don't know what it is with women and wallpaper. Take them to a wallpaper shop. It's like, which one do you like? I like that one. No, that one's ugly. Don't have that one. It's like, well, why did you ask then? Why not just say we're having this one and fucking deal with it? One hour later. Three fish, two perch, and a roach. Lost a big hybrid at the net. And lost another roach at the net to the pike. So we're catching fish. It's not as quick as I'd like it to be. I'm getting a lot of issues with zebra mussels. My hook lengths are coming back shredded. So I've had to change the hook lengths. I've had to step up from five pound fluorocarbon to se uh, seven and a half pound fluorocarbon. I've also changed the hook from a 12 to a 10, thinking that a bigger hook loaded with maggots, the buoyancy in the maggots, hopefully it'll keep the fluorocarbon up in the water. But so far it's been a nice day. Joined by three Eastern European guys who are spinning. They haven't caught nothing. So, what can you say? I'm hoping that they're catching all these guys. Otherwise, I'm going to have to shout at them. But. So let's see how that goes. My phone tells me that it is, uh, I think it's like 24 degrees. It is a sticky, di sticky day. Sort of day where you feel like you need a good shower of rain just to kind of clear the place up a bit, but there's no rain in the forecast today. It 
See, we all now have to wear masks when we go into shops and here in Northern Ireland. Makes you wonder why you didn't have to do that from the start when the lockdown was being eased. You know, we're already washing your hands 50 times a bloody day. Every, every time you go into a shop, alcohol gel. Now we have to wear masks. It's to be properly enforced now. I just wish they'd make up their mind. But what can you do? Politicians. Half the time they can't agree on the colour of shite, but feeder at the minute is a 50 gram or 45 gram feeder and it's just lifting the tip like that just just gently which means that the water is pushing the tip or pushing the feeder just down through the down the riverbed fishing with a four and a half I don't think it's a five foot tail five foot so hopefully that the, that the maggots are kind of above the deck I think it's time for a cigar. The Eastern European guys have now left. They came down for a chat. One of them watches the videos, so one of the first things that they, they kind of, the two of them that were fishing beside me said, uh, sport fishing, catch and release. So it was like, big thumbs up, guys. Not everyone is bad. You know, you have to kind of judge people how they are as an individual. One of them was saying that back where he lives in Poland, the 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 Christmas time food like we would have turkey. They would have carp. And I said, do you, do you go and catch them from like the rivers and stuff? And he goes, some people do. He said, but they're they're like reared in ponds now, so that they're so that they're like you know like we would rear turkeys, you know, and sell turkeys. They sell carp you know, so I suppose it's different different cultures do different things like I mean I know over in uh, you know Paraguay in South America guinea pig is quite a delicacy I can't imagine there'd be too much meat on the guinea pig but you know I suppose you have to make do with what you have locally. So, back to the tranquility of fishing beside a, a major bridge. <laughs> See? I've had to step the, the, heavy, the weight of the feeders up to 60 grams again just to kind of keep them on the, the bottom. They're, the, they're moving too too much. Anything later was moving too much. Not that the uh, the fish are crawling up the line or anything. It looks like it's going to be another one of those days. But I'm not painting and decorating, so that's good. Just then, this has gotten to become a bit of a habit. Jesus But I think it's happened Okay, the hook is now snapped Mr. Perch 
poo is well I think Mr. Perch is dead. Just take that hook out of him. Mr. Oh Mr. Perch is still alive, Mr. Perch. <laughs> and then this stupid creature. Calm down you. And then this What a day <laughs> That was some bite though A little dink like that there And it lifted I felt a little dab 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 and Then it was like whoosh What the fuck <laughs> I'm catching more pike in this the, With the feeder than what I did in some of my vlogs in the winter Fishing for pike <laughs> oh. That little bastard also tagged me. Right, now tie on new hook length. Put it back out there. gonna catch these all day I'd be happy I don't want to catch pike I want to catch nice hybrids like that <laughs> oh. so since the pike I've been wiped out twice by boats going past and I've had to tie another four hook lengths on because of the old uh, zebra mussels. So it's been <laughs> it's been a stressful 45 minutes. It definitely has. By sheer coincidence. That was another pike. This one managed to break the, the seven pound hook length before I could get it in the net, so I think similar story. Only this time it was a you know a roach of about a half, maybe three quarters of a pound. Roach about three quarters of a pound takes the takes the bit. Big Pike comes in and sees Roach and thinks I'm having a bit of you and before you know it I'm having to tie on a new hook length after losing one of the better fish of the session Still, it's a good day, except for the boat traffic, it's calm at the minute, but I went through a period there where it was like a boat every other fucking second, you couldn't even get cast out. That's the, uh, the tourists on the urn, I think. A lot of them get on the boat and have a few too many Chardonnays and then tear up and down the system. But quiet at the minute. I'm now probably going to jinx myself by even talking about them. It's like Beetlejuice. You say it too many times and the bugger appears.
So, it's a good day. We're on the water, we're having a good day. Okay, I'm gonna do a, a tourist day advice sort of thing now if he is. A lot of the viewers that watch this channel, they are from the mainland UK, England, Scotland, Wales, according to the analytics. I've actually got the viewers in France and places like Germany. Now one of the German guys reached out to me on the Facebook page for the, for the channel saying that he's wanting to come across and do some match fishing and blah 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 uh, what's the story with the festivals and I basically had to say to him that because the festivals pretty much got uh, got binned this year because of the Rona you're just gonna have to kind of come and pleasure fish if you can travel at all and he was asking about hotels and places like that there uh, Personally, I don't like telling people go and stay at X or Y hotel because you know the it's just it's not my it's not I'm not I'm not tourist you know it's not my thing. If you're gonna ask me where to go and fish on the urn, I could probably give you like a pointer in a general direction. If you're gonna ask me questions like what kit do I need to bring, I can answer that sort of question. Or where do I get bait from? All the bait I'm using today has come from uh, fishing tackle and bait on the Sligo Road in Eskillen. They are, in my honest opinion, the best tackle shop in Northern Ireland, without a shadow of a doubt. You know, the guys that run it are all, you know, quality anglers in their own right. You have guys that specialise in trout and salmon. You have guys that specialise in well, this course fishing that I'm doing now and you guys that do pike fishing. So if you have a question you can say to these guys, you know, they'll be fit to steer you in the right direction. You know, so the fresh bait is important when you come here. So getting it from the right people is is, is imperative. So for that reason I'd recommend happily recommend fishing tackle and bait. Now it runs into another thing, uh, like uh, sp sponsorships and stuff like that there. No, I, I'm not sponsored by anybody. Anything I'm using, anything you see me using has been bought f by myself. You know, nobody sends me stuff. I don't really want that if I'm honest. I think the problem with being sponsored is you're kind of chained to a tackle manufacturer. And it's, it's kind of almost like you're, like you're selling your soul. Because you're chained to one tackle manufacturer, I, you, you might not have the leeway to say product is good, product is terrible. You know, because if there's money involved, you kind of want to keep that money there. You kind of want to be happy to people. You know, I, I think personally, the fishing that I'm doing, you know, whether it's pike or it's coarse fishing or whatever, is fishing that I do for the fun of it. I'm not out here road testing, you know, gear for people. You know, I have had people reach out uh, asking me, you know, would I like to try some of their ground bits and stuff like that there. And uh, you know, a, a company in England said to me about uh, they would send some ground bit for me to try and blah blah blah, and I'd do like an honest review of it. And I was there thinking, well. The stuff that they were going to send wouldn't, I know it wouldn't work here on the urn. The urn doesn't get enough fish meal based ground bits for fish meal ground bits to really work. I mean, it's, you can come and you can kind of chuck in fish meals if you want, but I don't think that's going to be the best option for you. The urn is very much a traditional fishery. You know, since it's magic, is a very sweet ground bit, very very sweet. When I'm mixing the ground bit, I would use half a like half a bottle of the Census Aramix, the caramel stuff. I would use caramel, vanilla, molasses is another good one. 
you know, you put that in when it's wet and get it mixed around and adding your water to it. So your ground bit is, is sweet, really, really sweet. I mean, okay, in the autumn time, when it's beginning to snap into the colder weather, I would start to use uh, things like turmeric, uh, it's a curry powder. I would put it on my maggots. I would start to use chili and the hemp. Do you, that little bit of spice gets them kind of going. But in the summertime, when it's warm like this here, the fish are all, they're all, they've got massive sweet teeth. Sweet teeth, sweet tooth. I don't know what the plural is for it. So if you're coming to Northern Ireland to fish, coarse fish wise, a standard 12 foot, medium to heavy feeder rod, you know, uh, I fish with feeder braid, you know, you can fish with braid here. You can fish with monofilament if you want to. But a real, a 600 series and above reel, perfect. You know, again, Northern Ireland on the urn isn't all, you know, nice jetties like this. Sure there is, yes there are some, but some of the places that you fish, you might have to kind of, you know, be prepared to do a bit of walking. Bring chest waders, bring a platform, because there might not be a peg where you turn up to, you might have to kind of fish in the water, which means you'll need a platform or long legs on your, your seat box. You know, there's nothing that you, and you, you can come and you, there's there's nowhere that you're not going to get fishing tackle if you know what I mean. If you come over and you're going, oh crap, I've, I've left A, B or C at home, they're going to be able to get that locally, you know, it's not a problem. It's not like what it was in the, in the like the, the late 80s and early 90s where certain kit wasn't available. You know, I know as a pike angler, I grew up making my own pike floats out of balsa wood because you couldn't buy them. You know, my first uh, wire trace for pike was sea fishing wire for, I don't know, I think it was for congers or something like that there. But it was, it was, you know, it was like three millimeters thick coated steel wire. It was a beast of a thing. I can remember when lo the local tackle shop started, st started stocking some pike fishing gear. And you were like blown away because like it was Fox Easy Twist at the time. And you're like, this stuff is 30 pounds and it's like, it's tiny in comparison to the diameter of the stuff that we were all using. You know, talk about a game changer. But coming to Northern Ireland or the Republic, there's nothing that you'll need that you can't get local, if you know what I mean. Like bait wise, it's everywhere now. I mean, this is a beautiful day. I'm out here pretty much by myself, apart from the boats coming up and down every now and then, and the odd angler popping in to throw some spoons for pike. Social distancing at its very best. Just then. Can you tell what I had? The pike are really, really loving the small fish that I'm catching today. Top tip time. So you're fishing like where I'm fishing right now, that's quite deep straight off the bank. Now, you don't know what's at the bottom of the river. There could be a big, a big sharp tree or jaggy rocks, whatever, that'll just absolutely destroy your keep net. I like to have my keep net if I'm fishing in shallow water, I like to have my keep net staked out with a bank stick. So it's not collapsing in itself, it's all nice and staked out. That way any fish that's in it, they've got the maximum amount of room in the keep net to go up and down and do their thing. It's the same on these wooden jetties, or these jetties here. I put the keep net on the, on the, the seat box as I normally do. It's only a three metre keep net. At the end of the keep net, I have a bit of, bit of string or paracord that I tie to the jetty. That way the keep net is kind of underneath where I'm fishing, stretched out. 
and it's off the bottom. That way if there is sharp rocks, big trees, obstructions, you know, then your keep net isn't getting tangled up in it. I can tell you a story of a match event where somebody's keep net had a hole in it and they had they were catching real clinkers of fish all day and it came to the weigh-in and there was only something like four fish in the net and they were too big to fit through the hole in the arse of it so it was something that the guy didn't notice it was a hole you know but again what can you do little things like inspect your gear making sure your nets are dried after every session and you know you I take my keep nets I'll stake them out in the garden I'll hose them down that way they're kind of kept you know relatively clean if you leave a wet keep net inside a stink bag you know and uh, <laughs> it's just going to deteriorate so look after your tackle it pays to look after your tackle fishing has gone quiet but I am expecting the fishing to be quiet because the cloud cover has now burned away and we have a glorious absolutely fantastic sunny day you know there's a little bit of a breeze but the breeze would be deceptive you'd be sitting here frying like bacon but the little bit of breeze would be making you think oh it's okay it's okay so you go home and BOOM! You're like a lobster. <laughs> I'm half Scottish, half Northern Irish. So, it would be a relatively fair complexion in the mix. I kind of, I'll, I'll tan fairly easy. I don't know what it is, I seem to take a tan fairly easy. You know, any time I was in Iraq or Afghanistan that was warm, you know, you, you kind of got tanned really quick. But, the, but my wife, she doesn't do tanning so well. She would get uh, sunburnt at a fireworks show. I don't think anything of it. If it's on, it's small. Something's on. Oh, it's a little... little roach or something. Do I swing it in? Or do I net it? Do I take the chance to swing it in? Swinging it in for the win. Top tip, see when you do swing anything in, make sure you're holding it over the keep net. That way if it does manage to uh, throw the hook, then it's just straight into the keep net with it. I wonder are they going to turn around and come back again? Oh look, here comes the next set of them. They seem to come in pods of like, you know, five or six. And they seem to rip through this stretch of river, you know, as hard as they can. I don't understand it. There was two massive big cruisers, one was going this way, the other one was coming this way. And they were going at full speed. They tried to squeeze through the, the gap between the bridge. How there wasn't an accident beyond me today, it was, it was, they had the, the, 
the gap must have been inches. Other news, the fishing is still rather slow. <laughs> I'm down to like the last maybe couple of handfuls of ground bit. The thing with the window feeders, you're not really using that much ground bit. You're filling the window feeder full of particles and then smearing ground bit over the hole there to kind of cover that so that it'll sink to the bottom, the ground bit dissolves and the stuff comes out. So not really using tons of ground bit, so I only mixed a kilo, but I'm down to, yeah, I would say two maybe, two decent balls, but the size of an orange each. I've slowed casting down and just kind of didn't make it, cast every five minutes, wasn't making a difference, wasn't making a difference to fish, it's been slow. There's a festival next week on the urn. And if it's uh, weather like this here, that's just going to be a uh, put your factor 20 on, lads, and get a suntan because the <laughs> fishing's not going to be the best. Oh. This was a. I'm glad it was a drop back. No. Every now and then the tip goes like that there. And then it goes nice back to where it was again. But you would strike them and there's nothing there and the maggots aren't even touched. So I'm wondering what's knocked the feeder to make the tip spring back. Maybe it's a line bite. The good news is, I haven't had any eels today, and that's always a good day. Not a fan of eels. Unless it's for pike bit, then I'm a fan, but catching them and unhooking them, no, not for me. Oh, also, I want to say thank you to everyone that's sent me messages on the the Facebook page and Instagram and places like that there asking for like stickers and stuff like that there you guys are awesome uh, the, the orders that I've had this week they've all gone, they've all been sent out you know everything gets sent out first class so thanks to everyone that's ordered those stickers I am working on other things like uh, a little rubber PVC patch that like for your hat or something I'm working on them, but the difference is with those, it's, it's you go through that, it's the cheapest, I, well the best for value for money I found was a company in Germany, but you have to buy 400 in a batch, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's a bit of an investment to lay down, there's something that you don't know that people might not want, you know, they might buy 400 of these PVC patches, and it, and nobody wants them, so I'm stuck with the damn things. A friend of mine has a t-shirt printing business, and he's been on. He's been asking questions about you know, put your logo on a, a t-shirt stuff like that there. But I think it's a bit. I think I, well, I don't think the channel's big enough at the minute to be doing t-shirts and stuff like that. You know, there's a big difference between a sticker or a, you know even a baseball cap or something they got there.
but don't want to appear defeatist. I'm blown away that there's over 2,000 of you subscribed to my channel. <laughs> wow. I want to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed and to all the people that are watching the videos like right now and they haven't subscribed well then take the mouse over and subscribe press the bell as well it's cost you nothing it's free so subscribe to the channel helps me out share it on your social medias or tell your friends about it again helps grow the channel I don't know what I'll uh I think the I think the next marker is five thousand, I'm not sure. So I don't know what to do with that. I think if I get five thousand subs I'll probably end up doing a raffle and getting somebody across for like a weekend or something like that fishing with me if they'd be interested in that obviously being like poor and stuff you'd have to kind of make your own way to here I would in fact no I get 5,000 subs I'll happily put you up in my house and we'll go fishing for a weekend you just have to make your way to my house. That's the... That's the next biggie. Get the channel up to 5,000 subs and I'll do like a raffle or something where one of you can come... One of you or a couple of you can come across, stay in my house. Obviously you'll be drinking your own beer, you won't be drinking my beer. But we'll go fishing. Make a weekend out of it. How does that sound? But anyway, thank you to everyone who's doing these, uh, who's, who's already subscribed. You guys are awesome. Just got some cloud cover and started to get bites again. It's a bit nuts with the boats at the minute. Crazy, crazy day. Ah, cock. A little something, wouldn't you know, it's a little. Tiny tiny perch. I wondered what that bite was. These Guru Discogers are actually really, really good.
really good. There you go. I'm feeding red maggots and somewhere along the line somebody's fed a white maggot and that little perch at it. shredded. Every now and then run your fingers through the last little bit of your your hook, your hook dress, your hook line. Yeah, you'll find that it's hard fishing here. Probably reuse this hook. In fact, I'm going to reuse this hook. Let's get another cast out now while it's quiet. We, we don't have the wacky races going on. One eternity later. It's just gone quarter to five. Haven't had a bite in the last two hours. I think I'll just knock it in the head. Go home. Have a cold beer. Yeah, it sounds like a plan. Let me get all this cleared up and I'll show you what I finished up with at the end of the day, shall I? Right, let's see how we done. Right. Here's today's catch. The world's most awesome pain in the arse. Pain in the arse. You can see this one's been grabbed by something bigger, so I'm just gonna slip him back in. Then the rest of the fish. This is probably the best of them. Uh, not that many really. Still, it's better than being inside. Jesus, it's a warm day. I'm going home to have a beer. Six hours fishing, 14 fish. Not the best day, but again, it's a lot better than having to wallpaper a room and paint the ceiling. And anyway, until the next time, catch us later.